Hi there, it's April the 27th and today we are in Judges chapter 7 and first half of chapter 8. This is continuing the story of Gideon. At the opening of chapter 7 his name Jerubal is used, the one who contends with Baal, because uh, if we remember in the reading yesterday in, in uh, Judges 6 he destroyed the altar of Baal and nearly got into trouble with his uh, towns, the townspeople of the place where he lived. But he, the chapter opens, chapter 7 opens with him being called Jerubal or Gideon and he is calling the tribes of Israel, at least the surrounding tribes, but notably not the tribe of Ephraim uh, at this stage, but he's calling other tribes, Zebulun, Asher, Naphtali, he's calling them together and 22,000 of these tribes turn up to fight the Midianites. However, God says, I don't want that many. That's too many because if that many people come against the Midianites and win, you'll say that you won this victory by yourselves. So the, the Lord gets him to do something uh, to whittle down the numbers. And uh, in the whittling down the numbers with people drinking at the brook, um, and he ends up with just 300 and everyone else is sent home. Because the Lord says, I can save you with 300. Now, obviously, through the story, we learn that the Midianites are in fear of Gideon, in fear of the Israelites coming against them. And uh, Gideon goes with his um, servant down into the camp of the Midianites at night and overhears a dream being told about how bar a loaf of barley bread rolling into the camp and flattening the tents and that this was actually the Israelites. So... Gideon stands with his 300, he divides them into three companies and they have lamps and they have trumpets and he, he, they, they do a great cry, uh, this, this cry um, in Hebrew, Cherev Ladonai Ola Gideon, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And with the rumpus that that creates, uh, the, the Midianites are terrified and they flee. And then Gideon calls on the rest of the tribes to come down to the Jordan and to destroy Midian in their flight. And so they capture the kings and they, they, they execute them down there. And then at the beginning of chapter 8, we go on and we find uh, this pursuit continuing. But at the beginning of chapter 8, in fact, chapter 8, we see dissension happening among the tribes of Israel. It's quite disturbing. Ephraim takes offence at Gideon not having called on them to come and take part in this uh, finishing off of the Midianites. Gideon basically says, oh, you know, you, you, you've got a couple of the kings. Surely that's enough. Surely the riches that you've brought to this, it, it doesn't merit this, this um, dispute that you're raising. And then he comes to the city of Sukkot uh, with his troops that are, are, are needing replenished, they're needing fed. But the people of Sukkot say, why should we listen to you? We're not even going to bother with you. We're not going to provide you with any food. So Gideon goes on to defeat and to capture the kings of the Midianites and to dispatch them. And then he returns to the city of Sukkot and he, uh, he, he scourges them and he destroys their tower as punishment for the fact that they didn't support the rest of Israel in their battles against the Midianites. So the Midianites are put down, but it's interesting that it's with against the background of this dissension that is growing among the tribes, which we're actually going to see in Judges, grows worse and worse. And it's, uh, it's interesting that when Israel takes her eyes off God, when Israel doesn't look for, for God's guidance, they begin to quarrel among themselves and they begin to uh, turn on one another. And as I say, we're going to see this happening more. God wants peace among his people, but the only thing that will bring us peace, the only thing that will bring us that harmony among us, is keeping our eyes fixed on God and acknowledging him to be the source of our salvation. Have a very good April the 27th.